If you're working with logs in your mathematics course, then it's going to be important that you know some of the properties of logs. You need to know and understand these. Some of these I would say you just want to memorize. Others uh, you could work out from knowing some things about what a log is and what exponents do. So I'm going to say to start with, if you're studying logs, let's start with something a little easier. Make sure you understand, know and understand these eight exponent rules or properties. If you don't already know these exponent properties, I want to encourage you to look for this video on exponent etiquette. In this video, we'll walk through each of these eight exponent properties and you'll want to get to where you can fill in those exponent properties, the exponent etiquette or the rules for exponents. Let's look at what a logarithm is. It sounds like something so foreign and complicated, but really it, it could be quite simple if you understand that it's simply this new operation that finds the power, that finds the exponent. So what is a logarithm? A logarithm is the power to which we raise a base in order to get a given number. Finding a log means finding the exponent or finding the power. Here's two examples. Find the exponent. 5 to what exponent equals 25? That one might come easily to you because you're thinking, oh, all I would do is square the 5. So the exponent is 2. 5 to the second power is 25. Well, you've just calculated your first log. The log base 5 of 25 is simply going to be 2. 5 to the second power is 25. So in this first case, log base 5 of 25 is simply 2. That's what a log is. It's finding the exponent. What exponent would I raise this 5 to to get a 25? The answer is 2. This next one's a little more complicated. You probably don't have this one memorized, but 5 to what exponent equals 27? And this leads us to answer why we need logs, because this answer is not as obvious. 5 to what exponent would I raise 5 to? You could take out your calculator and try. You might know, well, 25 and 27 are pretty close, so it's probably close to 2. So it's going to be 2 point something, but 2 point what? When we use our uh, calculator and try it again and again, you'd if you were to uh, round this to four decimal places, we would get that that missing exponent is, are you ready for this, 2.0, like we said, we knew it was going to be pretty close to 2, right? 2.0478, and we could keep going infinitely. It doesn't, it doesn't have a pattern. It, it, it's an irrational number at this point, but it's approximately 2.0478. In this case, x would equal, the exponent would equal 2.0478. That's what a log is. Find the exponent. When we're trying to find a log, what we're trying to do is find the exponent. If you've got that down, if you can really know that what is a just basic definition what is a log the log is what we use the operation we use to find that power or to find that exponent okay let's let's jump to the properties the end of this video you should be able oh i gave away some of the answers the end of this video you should be able to fill in each of these properties. Okay, there we go. I've erased them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. If we were to connect to exponents, here's what number one is giving us. We're, we're saying a to what exponent would equal one? Well, from our exponent rules, we know that any base raised to the zero power is one. So rule eight from exponents. So again, this log, log base A of one, by definition is just gonna be 
zero. A to what exponent? The exponent of zero equals one. Doesn't matter what the base is, it's always gonna be uh, zero, right? The exponent is always gonna be zero. And then A to what exponent equals A? That's our rule seven on exponents. A to the implied one, right? So it's a to the first power is equal to a. And then this third one, oh, this one's a little bit trickier. This one's a little bit different. I'm going to give it to you that it's n. Why is it n? Well, if we remember what a log is, logs and exponents are inverse relationships our inverse operations. Taking the log and raising something to an exponent, those are inverses. They undo each other. So if I'm taking, uh, it's kind of like adding five and then subtracting five back, but what I get, I get whatever number I started with. So if I'm doing a raising it to some power, but that power is finding the power, so going back, it's just going to be an n. Let's move to the next group. Uh, a to this is almost this uh, fourth one is almost like a trick question because a to what exponent this is is equal to a to the r do you see well obviously this must be an r right if a what is the exponent it's almost like a trick where oh I forgot to cover up the answer a to what exponent equals a to the r well, the answer is just going to be an R. And then uh, these next three, I'm going to highlight as highly important. Mark my word on this, that if you're solving log equations, you're going to want these next three in your back pocket. These next three we will use to solve equations when we have uh, an equation where we're trying to find the exponent. So make sure you pay extra close attention to these three. Here they are. Log base A of M times N relates to rule one. And you see that with exponents, when we multiplied two like bases, we added the, the exponents. When we have log base A of M times N, that's going to be equivalent to log base A of M plus log base A of N. So what we have is that the log of a product is equivalent to the sum of the two logs log base A of a product is equal to the sum of the two logs. And likewise, the log of a quotient is going to be equal to, so the difference of the two logs. Do you see this connection to rule four? So here's, here's what you can bounce from if you know the exponent rules. Rule one and rule four the like bases that are multiplied, we added the exponents. Like bases that were divided, we subtracted the exponents. So for a log base A of a product, we would likewise get the sum of the two logs. Log base A of a quotient, we would likewise get the uh, difference of the two logs. And then this third one, here's what happens with uh, power, is that this power, this exponent, is going to fall down in front of the log. This is going to be of any of the different properties. This one is probably the one that we'll use the most when we solve equations. But this exponent, how do we get the exponent down? Uh, it falls right in front when we take a log. So it looks like this. Let's move on to just the last few here. So we have this, the R 
log base a of m. Now, this, these next two are what we would call change of base. If you want to change the base, and for this, it's, let's take a quick um, detour here. We've got two special based logs. We have a common log where the base is 10, and then we have a natural log where the base is E. So if you ever see a log, it's a log of 7. Notice that there's no base written in. When there's no base, it's implied, when there's no base here, it's implied 10. So if I write a log with no base, it's implied to be a base 10. This next one, when I have a log base E of something, let's just pick a 7. This is such a useful one in science and in many applications that instead of writing log base E, we would just write L N, log natural, or in other words, a natural log. So instead of writing log base E, I can write LN, and that means log natural, or the natural log. So log base E of 7 is equivalent to the natural log of 7. Be careful when you're typing that in. If you're using a homework platform like MyLabMath or Alex or someone, don't type it as a 1. It looks like a 1 sometimes, but that's actually an L. So log natural, natural log. If I want to change the base to base 10 or base E, here's the handy thing I can use that I can say that the log base A of M is equal to the log base anything of M. Let me write it over here where it's a little bigger. Log base anything of M divided by log base anything of that base. Log base B of M over log base B of B. Here's, here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to say that this is log uh, base 10 of M over log base 10 of A. And then if I want to use base E, I'll say log base E of M divided by log base E of A, or in other words, common log of M divided by the common log of A, natural log of M divided by the natural log of A. If you're looking for a way to remember that, notice that the base is always at the basement, right? Or the base is always at the bottom. The base of the log goes to the denominator goes into the bottom part. Two more properties that are going to be helpful, the one-to-one -one properties. If m is equal to n, then we could conclude that the log base b of m is equal to the log of that same base. Oh, I think I said b. I meant to say a. Log base a of m is equal to log base a of n. We could use any base, so right, as long as it's the same base. If we have the same base, if m and n are equivalent, so in other words, if we're using the common log, if we know that m and n are equivalent, then the log base 10 of m, or common log of m, is going to be equivalent to log base 10 of n, or log base e, natural log of m, is equal equal to the log base E of n. So if we have the same base and we know that m and n are equivalent, then the two logs are also going to be equivalent. If we have that the two logs are equivalent, then we can conclude that the m and n are equivalent. Well, that does it. That walks us through each of these log properties. I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and see how well can you do, if you had this as a quiz, if you were to look at this blank sheet, 
Can you fill in each of these log properties? If you can't, so pause the video and see how well you can do with that. If you can't, then keep practicing at it. If you're going to do a good job with using logs, you've got to start by having these rules, these properties down. Here's the answer key. So if you have already paused the video and worked those out, here's the answers you should have for each of those. And I hope that this short video has helped you underst understand each of the different properties of logs.